that moves. ENCA.com. Keith Musumane's journey is painful. In 2007, his little boy fell sick and died while waiting for paramedics. The closest ambulance was in Bulugwane, 40 kilometers away from Keith's rural home in Limpopo. The mourning father is using his painful experience to ensure his village doesn't lose another child in the same way. Bright, joyful and charismatic. Junior Musumane's parents witnessed their little boy taking his first few steps with pride. A journey they hoped would bring fulfillment in their lives. I was at work and then just after I knocked off and then I got a call and then they told me that my son was sick and then I just spoke to him the night before. And then they told me my son was sick. He was he was one year, one year, almost two years, one year, nine months. So they just called me telling me that my son was sick. And then on my way to catch a taxi and then I've tried phoning them. And then they said, no, we're still waiting for the ambulance. Junior's father, Keith, was helpless. He was traveling from work in Joburg to his Berchneck home in Limpopo. His only hope was a quick response from paramedics. When you call an ambulance, it either comes from Libohom or Polokwani. So now it took, I don't know how long it took because I wasn't there, but it took long for the ambulance to come. And there's no clinic in the community. The nearest hospital was 40 kilometers away from Berchneck. That was just too far to save the little boy. When I called them, they told me that my son was dead and it was the most painful thing ever. It was very, very painful. I couldn't believe it because I had plans for the future with him and all that. And then having his life sh cut short just like that, it was, it was painful. It turned out little Junior died of food poisoning, a loss that could easily have been avoided. A morning, Keith returned to Joburg a different man. His personal tragedy gave him a new life perspective. I had this dream in my heart to say, one day I would like to make, it an, make a plan so that in the community we should have a clinic. That would, well, that would save not only my family but other people in the community. In 2009, he met Warren Debrecht, a Canadian tourist who'd been staying at the hotel where Keith was working. A still grieving Keith poured his heart out to Warren about his loss. He told him how he desperately wanted to build a clinic in Berchneck. Warren was touched and wanted to help, but he had to return home to Canada. Over the next year, the two stayed in touch and came up with a plan to raise funds for Keith's dream. But they first had to find a solution to a more pressing issue. There was no water in the community. So people were buying water from the farms. In 2010, Warren came back to South Africa and the two used their own savings to buy a water pump. It was installed in Berchneck. This success encouraged them to think even bigger. I have to come up with a uh, business plan, something that we can do that we could be able to generate income and be able to get uh, the clinic built in the community so that be able to help the people in the, within the community. The enterprising pair mobilized the public and started a business. Using their own money and contributions from local residents, the Berchneck Community Project was born in 2011. They manufacture reusable sanitary towels for women, a unique product in South Africa. 
Keith and Warren were now able to create employment opportunities while at the same time solving another problem. These girls, when they go to school and then um, they're on their periods, some of them they don't have the necessary things to buy, then money to buy pads and stuff. So they use like cloth or tissues and then that stains their skirts. And then when boys see that, they laugh at them. And then at the end they go home and then they never come back to school. It's a major problem in some communities, one that many would never even think of. The pads come with a self-explanatory leaflet. They can be used and washed several times. At the moment, they are sold in Bergneck, and some are donated to those who can't afford. Meanwhile, Keith and his business partners continue to save money to build a clinic in Bergnek. That's it for now. Join us again next time as we explore the lives of those who dare to dream. The people who make South Africa a country of possibilities. My name is Mpola Gaje. Cheers. ENCA.com.